In this video, I'll be going through two trigonometry related problems and then one problem that I posted on YouTube the other day. So starting off with this problem then, the problem says the diagram shows a circle drawn inside a right angle triangle. The circle touches all three sides of the triangle. Find the radius of the circle, give your answer to three significant figures. This is a fairly classic problem in trigonometry and geometry. You have a circle inside a right angle triangle and they give you an angle and a side length. I encourage you to have a go at this one. It's a fairly satisfying solution. So pause the video now if you'd like to have a go. Okay, if you did have a go and you got the correct answer, well done. If you were struggling, here is a hint. You need to use a circle theorem, one of the circle theorems. So let's start off then. Let's draw the center of this circle. And then let's draw a line from the center to the edge of the circle, the circumference, which is also the triangle. And let's do three of those. Okay, so the important point here is that the question tells you the circle touches all three sides of the triangle. You should know that if a circle touches a straight line, that straight line is going to be a tangent to that circle. And I've just realized you actually need two circle theorems here. So the first one is that the radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees. Okay, so this radius here is going to meet this line of the triangle at 90 degrees. Same for this one and same for this one up here. Okay, the other circle theorem you're going to need is that tangents to a point are the same length. So these tangents, which are also the side lengths of the triangle, uh, from the point where they touch the circle to the point where the two lines meet, those lines are equal length. And actually, if you go all around the triangle, all of these lines are tangents to a point. So they're all going to be equal in length to each other and these ones down here will also be the same length. Let's also label the radius of the circle R and you might notice another shape in here. So we've got the triangle, the circle. Can you see another very familiar shape in this diagram? Well, now that we've drawn in these 90 degree angles, uh, well, if you've got three 90 degree angles, the other angle must be 90 degrees and we have a square in here. That means that all of these sides will be equal to the length, the radius of the circle. So we could label this one over here R as well. And we're almost done setting this up. We just need to draw in one more line. Where do you think that line's going to go? That's right, it's going to go from the center of the circle to the angle over here. Now that line bisects that angle because these two triangles must be congruent, right? They have two sides that are the same. Therefore, these two angles in here are going to be the same. So half of 40 is 20 degrees. Okay, we're now done setting up this problem. We can go ahead and start to solve it. The first thing I will do is label this length here. I'll call this A. Um, now I have this right angle triangle in here with side length A and side length R. And I have this angle of 20 degrees. Here the trigonometry comes in. So which ratio am I going to use to relate these two sides together? That's going to be the tan ratio, right? The tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we could firstly say that the tangent or the tan of 20 degrees equals R over A. And then I want to write this in terms of A. And you'll see why in a minute. So I can rearrange this so that A equals R over 10 of 20 degrees. And now I want you to focus on this long length here. We've said we've labeled this length A and this length R because we know it's the same length as the radius because this was a square in here. So we know that A plus R is 10 centimeters. I also know that A equals R over 10 of 20. So I can also say, well, let's start off by saying that A plus R equals 10 centimeters then substitute this in for A, we can say that R over 10 of 20 plus R equals 10 centimeters. So the first thing I'll do here is find a value for one on 10 of 20. So I can get a coefficient of R there. So one on 10 of 20 degrees. Uh, actually, I've got to make sure my calculator is in degrees first. that gives me 2.747 approximately. So this can also be written as 2.747 2 R plus R equals 10. If I simplify this, 
2.747 plus 1 would be 3.747, so R is going to be 10 divided by 3.747, approximately. I should use approximation symbols here. Okay. So now I just have to get a value for that. I'll add one to this and then divide 10 by that answer and I get 2.668 approximately. So R is equal to 2.668. And rounding off to three significant figures, I would get 2.67 uh, centimeters. Okay, so that is how, or one way to solve that problem. There are different ways. There is a much longer way to solve that problem. You can set up simultaneous equations by labeling all of these lengths. There's nothing wrong with solving it that way. It just takes a, a bit more work. Okay, on to the second problem. This question says the given diagram shows a ladder AB leaning against a cylindrical drum of, that should say of, I'll fix that in a minute, of radius 0.5 meters. The ladder has length five meters, one end of the ladder A rests on the ground four meters from the point C where the drum touches the ground. The other end of the ladder B is at height H meters above the ground, find H. So all of that basically just summarizes this diagram. We have uh, a ladder supposedly of five meters leaning against a drum and the radius of the drum is 0.5 meters. And we need to find this length over here. Well, one way you can do this is to focus on finding this angle in here because once you have that angle, you'll be able to use the sine ratio to find this length. So how can we find this angle? Well, we just hinted at it in the last problem, actually. If we draw a line in from the center of the circle to this angle, we know it bisects that angle. So I might just relabel this. I'll label the smaller angle theta, and then the larger one can be two theta. Well, I can find this angle because I have two lengths of this right angle triangle. I know it's a right angle triangle, again, because this is the radius meeting at the tangent at 90 degrees. So I can use the tan ratio again. Tan of theta equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. And this allows me to find theta by using arc tan or inverse tan. So I can do the inverse tan of 0.5 on four. And I get 7.125 approximately, approximately 7.125 so then 2 theta is going to be double this so now I have that angle in here the the whole angle of BAC and I can say that sine of 2 theta is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse and again this must be a right angle triangle because this is the perpendicular height from the ground to B so sine of two theta is going to be the opposite side h over five the hypotenuse and then again we can solve for h because we have two theta so h is going to equal uh, the sine of two theta multiplied by five which is approximately going to be let's plug that into a calculator the sine of twice the previous answer so i'll just do two times the answer and then multiply that by five, and I get 1.23 to two decimal places. So 1.23, and that's in meters. And that was to two decimal places. Okay, there you go. That is two similar looking problems, but fairly different in their solutions. I would say the first one is uh, a little bit more complicated and I think uh, more of a classic problem. Once you solve that, or once you see the solution to that, you generally don't forget how to do it. Okay, on to the problem I posted on my YouTube. This problem says A, B, C, D is a rhombus. A and C are points on the Y axis. B and D are points on the X axis. The line Y equals negative five X plus 25 cuts the X axis at D and the Y axis at E. The area of triangle AD is 37.5. Find the area of A, B, C, D. Okay, so what do you need to find the area of a rhombus? Well, it's the lengths of the diagonals. How could we know those that we could find the coordinates of these points A, D, C, B? And actually we only need two of the coordinates because we know that diagonals bisect in a rhombus. So if you find a point A, then you'll know point C. If you find point D, you'll know B. Okay, so let's focus on finding A and D. D we can find by using the equation of this line here because they tell you the line cuts the x-axis at D. So then you can find point D by setting Y equal to zero. So firstly, 
focusing on D, we can say that we'll have point D when y equals zero, so negative five x plus 25 equals zero. This will give you the x coordinate. Uh, well, what would x be here? It must be five, right? Negative 25 plus 25 equals zero, so x equals five. So we have point D that's at five, zero. Therefore, we also know B is at negative five, zero. Must be the same distance from the center. And then we need point A. Well, this is where this area comes in useful because they tell you this line cuts the y-axis at E. So we need to find point E up here. And you should know how to find the y-intercept of a line from the equation of that line. It's the constant added on the end. So looking at this equation, you should know that the y-intercept straight away is uh, 0, 25. And then you need to think about compound shape. So if, you tell, if they tell you this area is uh, AED, this triangle in here, if they tell you that area is 37.5, well, what does that mean this area down here is OAD? Well, the height of this triangle is 25, the base is five. So let's write this down. The area of triangle OED, that's this big one here from O all the way up to E and down to D again. The height is 25, the base is five. So this would be 25 times five divided by two. That's 125 divided by two. That's 62.5. Okay, so that's the large triangle OED. Then take away this area AED, which is 37.5. Let's do 62.5 take 37.5. Uh, this would be the area of the triangle OAD. Okay, so triangle OAD, that's the area. Sorry, I'm messing this up a bit. 62.5 take 37.5, that's 25. Okay, so this area in here is 25. And actually, you don't even need to use that to find the coordinates of A although you can because if this base is five, the length of the base here, OD is five, that must mean A is at, or at a height of 10 or zero 10. So 10 times five is 50 divided by two is 25. But you can also just say that a rhombus is the area of three equal or congruent triangles. So all of these triangles have, must have an area of 25. But however you want to do this, these two diagonals, this diagonal has a length of 10, this diagonal has a length of 20, because now we know coordinate C is zero, negative 10. And you can find the area of a rhombus by doing the diagonals multiplied together, divided by two. However you wanna do that, you should get an answer of 100. So let's just do it uh, by multiplying the diagonals. We would have uh, 10, so the area equals 10 multiplied by 20 divided by two, that's 200 divided by two, that's 100. Uh, and I didn't give any units there, so just unit squared is fine. Okay, final answer 100. Again, well done to those that got that correct. It's not a great problem. There's probably too many concepts jammed into that and none of the steps are particularly challenging, but I hope you found that interesting anyway. Okay, so there you go. There are three uh, geometry related problems. Two of those were around trigonometry. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.